people like him. Well, not like him, that's not right, but I'm just going to go after my dreams. Welcome to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. You can hear the thunderclap in the distance. You can hear the birds chirping. You can hear the waterfall running. All those sounds that you hear are the sounds of what we call the divine Om. Today, Ron and I are going to discuss, and while we're discussing, we'll also take you through a few processes of what the OM really stands for. OM is a trisyllabic sound that consists of AH, that reverberates in the lower belly, OO, energizes the chest region, and M mm, vibrates in the skull area. So what we're really doing, OM can be a very physiological phenomenon. Right now you'll hear, if I keep quiet, you can even hear the leaves rustling right there. The sounds, all these sounds in nature are the sounds that we as human beings are imbibing into our everyday breath, our everyday movement, our everyday life. So today we're going to do a little bit of a discussion that will help you, each one of you, take yourselves through your own spiritual path. Right here on this program, we do not discuss spirituality in general because we believe that's a very private decision. But we can help you. We can help you get started on that path. Ron Thomas. Ron is a producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Ron has been with us on the show in many, many episodes before, Ron, and it's an amazing transformation that I see in you. Tell me something as far as the spiritual part is concerned. We're not talking about the Hindu spiritualism or Christianity, but as far as the introversion is concerned, do you find yourself quietened down inside? Or do you find it happening when you finish your practice here? Is it helping you quiet yourself? Yeah, I try to listen to my body and see what it's trying to say. Right, right. And you do, I notice every time when you talk about listen to your body, that's a lovely phrase. Every time we talk about listening to your body, you are being respectful of your body. You're being mindful of your body. You're making your adaptations. You're taking advantage of the postures that are comfortable for you. You're doing them really well. You go deeper. Postures that you still need to get a little more practice with. You're making your adaptations. And that is the real comfort zone we all want to achieve. That is where we start introverting. That's where the spiritualism happens eventually. When you start experiencing those, through those moments of stretching, we're starting to think inward, we're focusing inward. So, Ron, I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, program today, before we started, we were talking about the sound OM. Tell me, I know you have your own show here. Before we forget, we'd like our viewers to know, Ron, you have a show every Thursday, right? 
Uh, 1 to 2 p.m. 1 to 2 p.m. It's called Big Talk. Big Talk. Oh, what channels? I keep 56. forgetting. 56. 56. Time Warner 56. RCN 83. Fios 34. Right? I think so, yeah. I, I got it. <laughs> See, I've had Ron on the show several times, so I know by now that he airs every Thursday, and Ron's is a live show, live show, right? Live, live call-in. Live call-in show. So if you want to tune in every Thursday between 1 and 2, call in. He discusses a lot of politics, a lot of current topics, sports, whatever captures your interest. And even while you're listening to him, note how his own momentum is changing these days. You'll find that maybe in the beginning, maybe a few years ago, Ron was all about only sports, 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 and very aggressive, very assertive. Now he's calming down. He's still assertive, but he's calming down because he's starting to look for the inner peace inside of him. Before we move on... I've always been like that. <laughs> Ron. They say you never talk. He, we didn't have a choice. No, Ron has always been very reflective. That's true, though. You have been very reflective, and you do, you, you do realize your own strengths. And your, and being reflective is not just acknowledging our weaknesses. It's also knowing where our strengths are, and that's where all the spiritualism starts from. There, it starts blooming from there. Before Ron and I move on, I'd like to thank Josie and Hurd, our director. Josie, and thank you so much for being there when we needed you. I know today has been a tough. Day. It's been a challenge, technically speaking. Melanie Morgan, our facilitator for today, thank you so much for helping us get started and moving on. The body music that you hear right now, those sounds, are actually music created by Cesar Dipara, who is acknowledged at the end of today's episode as well. We will be using Cesar's music for the next couple of days. I would like to take our viewers um, we're using my book, my third title, Yoga Secrets, which has two plus eight ailment-specific cards. I'd like to take, Ron and I would like to take our viewers through some simple breathing techniques. And when we are about 20 minutes into the show, right now we're about seven or eight minutes, when we're about, in another 10 minutes after some breathing techniques, we'll do the simple version of sun salutation, maybe once, two or three times, we'll move a little faster, we won't hold it too long, and tomorrow and the day after, we'll get back, right back into our regular stretches. So if you come and stretch with us, we give you a copy of Yoga Secrets, we'll also give you a copy of my postcard with 48 simple postures, low impact, uh, simple low impact bridge sequence is how I like to call it, because this is not the ultimate sequence. It's a sequence that will help you bridge the, uh, as a bridge for days when you cannot go for your yoga practice. So think of us as a link in your fitness schedule. Yoga Express airs Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. So stay with us, stretch with us. Ron, are we ready to chant the OM? Yes. I like your attitude. You don't think of OM only as a spiritual thing. So you're willing to give it a try, and that's what I want our viewers to do. So sit on a brick, so that'll bring your upper body up, so it brings your torso up when you're ready. So what is happening is when you want to give yourself a little bit of a height, the way, the way I'm sitting, I'm sitting on my heels, that gives me my extra height. So what you want to do is loosen up the upper body, the, the abdominal region, the uh, thorax, as they call it in uh, the biology books. So that's where your lungs are, and you're going to be breathing through the belly. So Ron, here's what we're going to do. Keep your left hand on your chest, on the left side, on your left hand, Ron. Oh. <laughs> right hand on the lower belly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start inhaling. As we inhale through the lower belly, we're going to fill the belly with air, and we make a loud ah uh, sound. And then we'll do the oo sound, and we'll feel it in the heart region. When we come to the mm, we'll move our hand, go to the skull region, close our eyes, and you'll feel the reverberation right there. So place your right hand on your lower, on your belly. Good. Now, close your eyes, take a deep inhale, exhale through the belly. Make a sound. Ah. Uh, so expand your belly area. So fill that with air. Now. Do make the oo sound, expand your lung area. Ooh. Ooh. Can you feel that in the heart region, Ron? 
You can mm -hmm. feel the vibration. Yeah. You'll feel it a lot more as we keep practicing. You'll feel it. And now take your right hand, place it near the skull, on the right side of your skull, and go. So the sound of, very nice. The greater your lung power, the longer is your breath, your exhales. So the sound of om is really a trisyllabic sound. Ah from the belly, u from the thorax, the thorax from the lung area, and m mm, that reverberates in your skull area. So what it's doing is it's simply encapsulating a simple uh, term. We like to say where the mind goes, energy flows. When you do ah, you're sending all that energy in the lower abdominal region. When you say ooh, you're sending all the energy to the upper abdominal region. So the lung area gets energized. This is the large intestine, the pancreas, liver, everything, all the glands and organs in the lower area. And then when you go mm, the pineal, the brain, the pituitary, all those glands inside, they feel, they are en totally energized, especially the brain is totally charged. So when you make the ohm sounds over and over as a chant, yes, you do get a kind of a spiritual high, but for those to whom it means something, it may take them to religious levels and to each our own religion. No one is going to convert anybody. But just know if you have, in another language, if you have, this, if you have three sounds, a trisyllabic word or a trisyllabic sound, that does the same thing for you, energizes the lower abdominal region, the upper abdominal region, and the skull region, that's fine, because we have another yoga teacher, Adina. She has her students chant shalom. So the sha, I guess she brings it from the lower region, and then oh, but you still have the om at the end of it. So it doesn't matter, if shalom means something to you, that's fine, go ahead, go with whatever, whatever, meaning you're able to extract out of your experience is what you really want. You want to get the most out of your experience. If, if OM doesn't mean anything to you, just think of it as a sound. It's also called the primordial sound, as they call it. In fact, if you go to Mount Kailash, the mountains in the Himalayans, Himalayan ranges, it is so vast, you will hear the echo of basically the planetary movements, and if you close your eyes, apparently you can hear mm. the uh, planets moving. You can hear that sound, the stillness. Basically, the sounds of silence. So people interpret that as, you know, that's the abode of Lord Shiva, so you don't have to go into Lord Shiva, but I'm just telling you how we interpret in India. It's an interesting yeah? story, though. It is, and every religion has its own story. So Ron, let's do a few more breathing techniques. So the other thing too, Ron, and I didn't mention this earlier today, I've mentioned it before. When we chant, chanting is repetitive sounds, right? It's just like singing. When you sing, you put words to music, you put sounds to music, there is a lilt, there's a tune. And when people sing, their mind doesn't wander. They stay focused on the tune. Basically, chanting is like that, but without any accompaniments, and you're chanting to an inner vibration. Chanting is repetitive sounds that clear the mind of negative debris. That's how I like to put it. So your mind doesn't wander, you don't think negative thoughts. So that's a little bit about the OM today. And as long as we stay positive, all these positive vibrations, they reach out, they emanate in your whole building. In fact, one of the executives upstairs at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, these episodes are taped in the studios of MNN, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Ron, I'm going to give you my break as well, if you want to keep both together. I know it's sort of uh, uncomfortable sitting on one, I understand. So keep them side by side. Uh, Zineda Mendes, and I'd like to thank Zineda for the suggestion. She said, Banu, your program is ready to move to the next level. And she talked about positive energy that can reverberate through the whole building. And by just practicing right here. They feel here, the show up there. They see the show and they feel it too. They hear it. They feel it. I don't know if everyone hears it, but they see it. You're right. They do yeah. see it. <laughs> they watch. They watch. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We did three breathing techniques the last time, Ron, when you and I were just there. We did the Ujjayi. We did Kapal Bhati, Shining Skull, and then we did Bhastrika, the bellows breathing. So let's try, actually we've covered all the five. Shanmukhi, we haven't done Shanmukhi and Brahmari. So let's try those two first. And then if we have time, we'll 
do a quick recap of the other breathing techniques before we take you through the sun salutation. Shanmukhi Mudra. Shanmukhi is seal, sealing gesture. So you're basically sealing all the avenues, all the outlets, nerve endings in your face. I'm going to take my fancy glasses off. So we have optic nerves right here. So place your forefinger on the optic nerves. I also needed to read. Let me make sure that we are... Yes. Okay. We are optic nerves. So place both your forefingers just below your eyebrows. Your middle finger at the edge of your nostrils. The point where your nostril touches the ridge of the nose. Middle fingers go over there. That's where your um, oral passage, where you breathe through, those nerves end over there. And then your ring finger comes on the upper lips, little finger on the lower jaw. So you're already closing off all the avenues. Right now we are applying a little bit of pressure to know where those points are. And the thumbs go over the outer ear. That's called the pinna, this little piece over here. Whatever it's called, that little piece right on the cent in the center of the ear. So now we're going to loosen. We're going to keep our fingers there, but loosen those points. Take a deep breath in first. And then press on those points very lightly. Hold it. And then release very gently. Exhale. Very nice. Let's do that two more times. Keep your fingers where they are. Inhale. Take a deep breath in to the count of four. Hold to the count of two. Exhale to the count of eight. Let's try that. Inhale to four. Hold. Exhale. Depending on our lung power, here's what we were doing. We are inhaling to a full lung capacity, holding for two counts, exhaling to the count of eight. Your exhale should always be twice as long, not yet run. At the end, <laughs> that's okay, it's already relaxed you now. Yeah. Twi the exhale should be twice as long as your inhale. So one more time, Shanmukhi Mudra, sealing gesture. Basically, you're sealing off all the energy points in your face. Talk about yoga for the face. So your four fingers just above the eyebrow, middle fingers at the base of your nostril, ring finger just above the upper lip, little finger below the lower lip, thumb on the in the middle of the ears. Now, inhale to the count of four. Hold to two. Exhale to eight. So what we are doing is, since we don't specifically have yoga for the face, this is one of the ways we energize the muscles in the face. The face has a lot of muscles around, especially when we smile, we use a lot more muscles when we smile. When we frown, we use, you know, we are actually, not only is it a negative energy, we're not really re uh, massaging any of the muscles. So let's let's keep that in mind and always when you smile also that's that's something very contagious as you know when we smile at people they smile back so all that positive energy starts moving and then thanks to Zaneda she's going to feel it upstairs on the third floor right I think they all feel it <laughs> now one more this is very interesting now the Shanmukhi Mudra is especially great for helping release pain or helping relax the sciatic nerves so the when you're pressing on all those points, you're taking in all that oxygen and it's releasing right through your veins at the bottom. You just have to visualize how you're sending all that fresh oxygen through the back of your legs. Now let's try, this one is great for helping us relax, especially to calm us down. And uh, people who are hypertensive may want to do, you know how when people get really stressed out, they say, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we don't realize, we take a deep breath and we inhale as if we're going to run out of air. But really, when you take a deep breath, the exhale is what helps us relax. So when you take a deep breath in, exhale double the length, and you start relaxing. So next time you start getting stressed out, Ron, you're going to exhale. Take a deep breath, exhale. Don't hold it. So Brahmari. Brahmari is bumblebee. Now, when we talk about bumblebee, we actually we just make the sound of a bumblebee. We just place the little finger on in the middle of the ear 
Okay, and don't press it too much in. We just keep it right at the tip. And then take a deep breath in first to the count of four. Hold. And then as you release, press that little part of the ear in and go. the count of eight. Now I may have gone a little more than eight because I was ready for it. The next time I'm going to time myself properly and to help me do that I'll sit on my heels to give myself a little more height. Now we're going to do that two more times. Place the little finger over the middle part of your ear. Take a deep breath in through the back of your throat. <clears throat> Hold. Press the little part of the middle ear and then exhale through the stomach. Good lung capacity. So keep going. As long as your lungs still have air, keep going. And as we go in, even though we're exhausting the lungs of air, it's really the lower abdomen that should keep going in and in and in. So we're taking it in. We're tightening our muscles. We talk about ab crunches. This is our yoga ab crunch right there. We're, you know, making those muscles nice and tight. One last time, and then before Ron goes to sleep on me, gets too relaxed, we're going to do sun salutation. I need to wake up Ron. Take a deep breath in to the count of four. Hold to two. Exhale through the belly to eight. I was trying to keep up with Ron. You beat me, Ron. Oh, I do. <laughs> No, 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 I know you're not. We're not competitive over here, but it's good to know that your lung capacity is high enough to hold the exhale that long because that's what helps us detox. And in this particular breath, Brahmari or Bumblebee, it helps us relax. So sometimes when you're not able to sleep at night, actually I need to share this with Sarah, if you're not able to sleep at night, just make these little Bumblebee sounds, you know, through the inhale and exhale, it'll help calm the brain. All right. Before you go to sleep on me, Ron. Just oh, how are we doing for time? I know you're not. It just looks so relaxed. How are we doing for time? Six. Great. Six minutes. That's wonderful timing. Ron and I are going to get up. We're going to take now, this is what you need to remember. Every day before your regular stretch practice, your posture practice, you need to do some breathing exercises. We took you through about five before and about three today. And then you start your posture practice. You close with yoga nidra or yogic sleep. Heels together, toes slightly apart, palms in front of your chest. Ron, maybe you want to come forward just a little because you need leg room. Yeah, do that. That's fine. Inhale. This is namaskaras. And inhale. Take your arms up. Hasta uttana. Namaskar was prayer. Hasta uttana. Hands raised. Uttana is raised. Hasta is hands. Exhale, fold from the hip into Pada Hasta. Keep your back nice and straight. Hands to feet. Pada is feet. Place both your palms six to eight inches in front of your feet. Take the left leg back and then the right. Exhale, press your heels down. Dip your head between your biceps. Feel that stretch in the back of your legs, especially Ron, because we've been sitting for so long. We've been oxygenating the middle part of the body and the skull region, but the legs needed some blood circulation. So we, we will feel it a lot more now. Inhale. Now this one is called Adho Mukha Shwanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Adho is downward, Mukha is facing, Shwana is dog. And in uh, North America, it's called Downward facing dog, but the school I came from calls this parvat or mountain. Inhale, bring the left foot between the hands into Ashwa Sanchala. Place the right knee on the floor, uncurl your toes in the right foot. If you've hurt your knee, 
in, or you have any kind of knee injury, make your adaptations. Place both palms on the left knee as Ron, Ron is doing. Bring your elbows out to the side. Ashwini is horse. This posture is equestrian. Exhale and dip. We're going to do the full sequence now. Now for the Yoga Express twist. The sun salutation by itself stretches and uh, energizes every major muscle group, gland and organ in the body, except the oblique. So Yoga Express decided to add Yoga Express twist. Inhale the arm, right arm up. Exhale, dip your right elbow over the left knee. Place your left palm on top of the right. Look up at the raised elbow and hold. Parsva Kona Namaskara. Parsva is intense. Kona is corner or twist. Namaskara is prayer. Intense prayer twist. You should feel a wonderful stretch of your abductor muscles on the outside of your upper left thigh and your quads on the front of the upper right thigh. Inhale, come out of that. Place both palms beside the left foot. Curl your toes in in the right. Lift your right knee. Take the left to me, let's switch legs. Take the left back and bring the right foot forward. We're gonna combine both sides so that we can get three rounds. Bring the right foot forward. Uncurl your toes in the left foot. Be mindful of your body if you need to make adaptations. Exhale and dip. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip the left elbow over the right. Place the right palm on top of the left. Look up at the raised elbow and hold. Inhale. I also feel lovely compression on my obliques on the right side and a stretch, a beautiful release of my obliques on the left side of my waist. Inhale. Come out of that. Curl your toes in in the left foot. Lift your left knee. Take the right to meet the left in plank position. Plank. Your hands are directly below the shoulders, fingers are nicely splayed, your feet, your heels are, toes are curled in, heels are together. If you're tired today, you can bring your feet apart a little bit. Knees, chest and chin to the floor. Exhale. From Danda or Plank, we're going to go into Ashtanga Namaskara. Before we go, I'll just explain very quickly. Ashta Anga, eight limbs. Ashta is eight, Anga is limbs. Eight limbs that make contact with the floor. The two hands chin, chest, knees, and the two feet. So chin, chest, hands, knees, and feet. Exhale and dip. Inhale, glide out into Cobra. I know this is Ron's favorite because you have a strong back, Ron. Not, uh, keep your palms down for the moment. Press with the tops of your feet, Pujang or Cobra. And just think of the Cobra, the snake, that actually doesn't have feet. They use the tail. They press down on the earth with the tail to lift themselves up and that's what we are all doing here. Press with your palms, tops of your feet, inhale, lift your chin and chest up. Keep your feet down, press with the tops of your feet this time, engage your low back, tighten your buttock muscles, take your palms off of the floor like a king cobra. Palms back on the floor, forehead to the ground, curl your toes in, inhale, lift your buttock all the way up Buttocks go all the way up into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, bring the right foot and then the left between the hands. Both palms together. Inhale, come up with a straight back. Exhale and release. Even though I promised that we would sort of swing through three sequences of sun salutation, we only did one. It was a dual sequence. We did both sides. We held it much longer. Now, we'll probably, depending on how much time we have, we'll do the same thing, but we'll make it briefer. We'll go faster. Holding times will be less. Heels together, toes apart. Palms in front of your chest, elbows are raised. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, fold from the hip. Palms. Um,